Good afternoon, all of you. Am I audible? Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. Ma'am, you can uh, unmute your mic, ma'am. I think it's muted. No, ma'am, we are not able to be in. Ma'am, we are not able to hear you, ma'am. Is it okay now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I've joined from another account. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, can you increase your volume, ma'am, or your volume because it's uh, very less from. No, ma'am. How about now? I've, I've taken no, ma'am. I'm using maximum uh, volume now. Uh, yes, ma'am. Now we are able to hear. Okay, done. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Ma yeah. So shall we start, ma'am? Yes, yes, we shall. Yes. Oh, thank you, ma'am. So good afternoon, all. On behalf of a PhD management principal, Department of ECE, on my own behalf, I welcome Mrs. S. B. Bhagyalakshmi, Behavioral Training Consultant, Certified Psychometric Assessor. And also, I welcome all the participants from various institutes who are connected with us virtually for AACTE, ISTE sponsored uh, induction and repression program on titled Integration of Pedagogical Strategies with ICT for Transformation of Engineering Education. We welcome you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So, it's my pleasure to introduce our resource person in this virtual gathering. She completed her master's degree in business administration and she specialized in understanding human behaviors through various psychology courses. She worked in industry for around eight years as a soft skill trainer. Currently, she works as a behavioral training consultant and delivering various uh, training programs and also she is conducting the personality assessment test. She obtained various certifications, which includes a psychometric test professional, applied basic counseling skills, HR development and training, a diploma in transaction analysis. Currently, she is pursuing a Master of Arts in Psychology. We are very much delighted to have you in this program, ma'am. And also, I request all the participants to make the session more interactive and get benefited from this FDP. 
Once again, and welcome all of you. Thank you all. Ma'am, shall we start the session? Yes, we shall. Thank you, Ma'am. So, very good afternoon to all of our present here. Uh, thank you for the introduction, first of all. And I'm really happy to be part of this particular uh, program. And I could proudly say that I'm a PSD product as well. So, uh, you know, it is happy to get associated with PSG brand once again uh, as a speaker. Okay, so let me share the screen one minute. Okay, so. So I'm basically a behavioral training consultant as, as I got introduced and I'm a certified psychometric assessor as well. So the topic which uh, I have planned for the next couple of hours is that uh, psychometric tools to understand uh, student abilities for directing them to reach their full potential. Okay. So this is a topic which we are going to deal with. And so whenever required, please stop me for questions, clarifications. And if at all, if I uh, speak fast, please uh, let me know to slow down. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. Shall I proceed? Okay. So, although we are humans, you know, there are a lot of things which uh, make us unique. So, starting from our own behavior, our personality, all the way to knowledge, uh, likeliness, dislikeliness, our favorites, many other things, right? So good thing is that there is no one exactly like us in the world. We single individual is completely unique, right? So that is one special thing. So in order to live our life to the fullest, you know, we need to discover ourselves. Who we are, first of all, and then what is our strengths? Our weaknesses, why we are on this earth, what is the purpose of our birth, right? So we need to find out, only then we would be able to live the life given to us to the fullest manner, okay? So, you know, you can think, okay, job, you know, your family, everything put together on the whole self, that's one element, and you as another element, what is that you are here for? So self-discovery, uh, it not only allows us to uh, know our true potential, you know, but it also guides us to find the right purpose to our life. When we do that, we'll be completely satisfied every other day. You would not feel much stressed. Okay, So if at all, if you know yourself much better, so that you can utilize your skills, knowledge, your strengths, everything to the fullest. Okay. So... Discovering the personality traits through psychometric tools is the one which we are going to see today. So the word psychometric, uh, it kind of, uh, you can easily guess from the word, from the word metric, it is some sort of measurement, right? So psychometric, uh, to put together, we can say psychology plus metrics, which coined the term called psychometric. So it basically measures your personality traits, your mental ability, your skills, knowledge, attitude, and so on. Okay, so that is what psychometrics mean. Okay, so how do we do the uh, interpretation? Uh, yes. Madam, Madam, sorry to disturb. disturb. Your voice is breaking, ma'am. What is breaking? It's not seamless. Ma'am, we are not able to hear your uh, voice correctly, ma'am. And also, I think there will be some echo, ma'am. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, just give me a minute then, one minute. Okay, ma'am, no problem. No problem.
no more now. See the same? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, it's audible. It's audible. Okay. Then shall I proceed then? It's not audible, ma'am. Not audible? Okay. I don't know what to do now. Yes, I'm using the fullest volume. How about now? Ma'am, speak, Ma madam. Speak, madam. Uh, how about now? It's audible, it's but very feeble, madam. madam. Okay, uh, I'm not sure how what to do now because, like, uh, I'm using the fullest, I'm using headsets also. Now I've tried to speaker. say it's audible um, I'm um, I think you're using, using two, two devices, two devices sir. yes yes i'm using two devices one ah, ah it, it shows that, that your ppt device, device, device is not, is not uh, uh, the mic the mic is the mic the mic okay just hold on change the settings Because I think it's like short, there is no mic.
Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Now it's clear. It's clear. Okay. 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 Thank you, ma'am. Okay. It's very much clear. Okay, so we talked about uh, psychometrics, uh, that is definition of psychometrics, uh, psychology plus metrics. Uh, so, uh, so it is basically, it is measuring your personality traits, mental ability, skills and knowledge and attitude as well. Okay, so how do we interpret uh, such psychometric test? Uh, we kind of uh, uh, take a questionnaire and then we do an assessment test. Okay. So based on the questionnaire, uh, we do the scoring as well. So when we do the scoring, you will be tagged under a type of test. I mean, a type, basically a typology. We coined the term called uh, typology. So, you know, you would be able to understand your characteristics, strengths, uh, weaknesses, career choices and all that. Okay. So that is what the psychometrics uh, would help you. Okay. So you can ask me, why is that, you know, professors need to know about psychometrics uh, when you have a lot of different subjects that you have to handle, right? Uh, how it is going to help you? The simple answer is that just like us, our own students or also each and every individual is different. They are unique and they are special, right? So that is the, you know, uh, important point we need to think on since our students are also different unique and special if uh, we faculty members uh, can identify you uh, know those and then tell them it's wonderful right so i love this quote uh, which is exactly fitting into the psychometric world uh, which is you know uh, everybody is a genius but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid right so that is the, you know, that uh, says the importance of, uh, you know, uh, understanding and guiding each one differently. Okay. So, so due, to, uh, due to time and few other constraints, uh, majority of the professors, uh, they are forced to analyze students in a very generalized way uh, rather than a personalized manner. Right. So it is because of a lot many different constraints. It is very difficult to personalize uh, the teachings, personalize the guidance to each and every member in a 60 uh, students classroom. So that because of a lot of constraints. So, but if at all, when you do the personalized assessment and you can, if, you, if you can guide your students to realize their full potential, you become their life mentor. Right. So you would have many would have already been a life mentor, you know, even students who have passed out 10 years back, if they are still in touch, in touch with you, if they're still sharing their uh, personal life experiences, everything with you, then you are their life mentor. Right. So my question is that what do you want to choose? Would you like to become a professor only or would you like to become a professor as well as a life mentor? OK, if you're all option is professor plus life mentor then this program would be helpful for you okay so if you can guide the students uh, to identify their uniqueness their talents their personality traits then you are actually helping them to unlock their full potential as a human okay that's the one of the best thing you can do to your own students okay so i would definitely have to thank my own uh, faculty members years back because like during my uh, MBA uh, program, uh, they conducted a psychometric workshop, uh, you know, and uh, it was my professors who taught me, you know, who taught us about the world, the term called psychometrics, what is there in it and all that. From that uh, moment, I would say from 2010, I got introduced to this uh, term psychometric. So all the way until now, I know I train myself to understand what is that. And I've become a psych certified psychometric assessor as well. So since uh, 10 years back, my uh, faculty member was able to identify that uniqueness and they gave me the guidance. Now I'm here. 
right so if if at all if we also can find out each and every talent uh, among the students then you know another 10 years time they would be in a great positions okay so which you are already doing it i'm just going to add value to it okay so psychometric tools uh, let me be clear here uh, psychometric uh, tool each and every tool it's a, it's all big theory and concepts and it needs uh, you know i would say two to three days of workshop model program even for one tool you know they almost conduct one day workshop to that extent it is extensive okay uh, so i'm trying to uh, provide here three uh, psychometric tools uh, one uh, the first one and the second one would be kind of basic um, which you can directly take in i will be giving you the reference document uh, which you can directly take it and then um, you know conduct in the next class uh, session of yours next classroom session you would be able to conduct the psychometric test for your own students okay so i have given i have planned a questionnaire and all that and the last one uh, that is one big it's, it's almost one or two day workshop uh, which i'm trying to give you the gist and uh, however possible i'm trying to give the at least into the first hand uh, uh, traits explanation i would try to give it to you okay so that is what i have planned today okay so the first test uh, psychometric test what we are going to see here is that uh okay before which i want to convey this information so i would also be asking a lot of questions uh, in the questionnaire format uh, so if you are attending from you know through laptop or mobile uh, please do have a notebook next to you because there will be a lot of questions for which you need to answer it and you need to identify your personality type okay so the very first important point is that uh, do not answer right answer for the question answer which is right to you for example here you can very well read it so when it comes to completion of the task answer uh, two answers i complete on time always Op option b most of the time i complete the task with an extended timeline if you asked me uh, which is the right answer in general everybody would say a right uh, but let's say uh, honestly there would be a lot of people Uh, could be struggling due to different uh, tasks in their hand they would be struggling to complete the task with the uh, i mean uh, before the deadline okay so so in this situation let's say if i am in that manner then my right answer for me would be b it's not a okay only if i answer it as b because i'm doing it in that way i would be able to identify my personality type easily if i'm going to answer it in the opposite manner which is not true to me i would not be able to find out the exact personality type in which you would not be able to identify the exact strengths okay so i request you to answer which is right to you and uh, do consider both professional and personal life while answering each and every question and uh, so do not limit yourself after knowing your traits so that is a uh, consequence of knowing it okay? because you know it you shouldn't limit yourself you should always extend and you should try to learn the other skills as well okay um so this is the first one uh you would have very famously you would have uh, uh, you know um, through ads you would have gone through the, the this particular test left brain and right brain test so this is the questions uh, just hold on let me check the speaker one minute hold on Okay. Okay. So, you know, can you read the questions? Can you read the questions here? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay, done. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so this is a you know you would have you would face ten uh, questions now. Uh, have your notebook next to you for you to note down the answer. Okay. Uh, so you can read, or if you want me to explain, or I can also explain. Can you easily understand as well? So for question one, two, three, four. Uh, so every question will have two options A, B. So 
try to choose the exact statement which fits your behavior okay both the ways it's right okay so there is no right or wrong wrong answer in the world of psychology everything is accepted okay so for the qu first question write down a or b which is the character characteristic i mean characteristic trait of yours the question number 1 and then question number 2 3 and 4 So I'll wait for a minute for you to complete. Okay. So I'm moving on. If somebody wants to stop me, please stop me. Okay. Question number. Number one, question number two, question number three, and question number four. Okay, so moving to question number So hopefully you have answered these three questions five six and seven okay i'm moving on please stop me if you want to um, read the question okay moving on okay here comes the next set question number 8 question number 9 and then question number 10 Question number nine. Ah, uh, you can you know also take the meaning like so whether you like to plan something and then do ah uh, that is a or would you like to create something new? Okay, that is B for question number nine. I'm saying for the option A, if you like to plan something and do yes, but then you can choose A. If you like to create something of your own, something very new, then you can use ah uh, B. okay so so hopefully you have answered the 20 10 questions now comes the scoring okay so now add the all all the a responses and then b responses total your a responses total your b responses and then there will be a number so if you have more a responses than b then you are left brain dominate 
if you have more b responses than a then you are right brain dominate so now what you can do is that you can uh, uh, you know uh, text whether you are left brain dominate or right brain dominate in the chat box for us to quickly review Total of all A, total of all B. Okay, Dr. Kavita, left brain, fantastic. Total central diagram, left. Okay, perfect. Left brain, right, left. Left brain, left. Okay, fantastic. So, so many left brains, right? <laughs> Both are equal. Fantastic. Yes. Shanti ma'am, I would come back to you at the end of this uh, particular test. What happens if both are equal? <laughs> okay, good enough. Okay, now we shall move on. Right, left. Okay, fine. Fantastic. So, so now you can understand there are two, uh, you know, traits, left brain dominate and right brain dominate. The third is, you know, equally brain, okay? Uh, so, in a sense, the characteristics, okay? So, we shall see the qualities of left brain and then now right brain. So, left brain people, they are very logical. Uh, they can analyze people, uh, problems and situations very easily. They are very focused on facts and then details. Uh, they love math and science. Uh, they they would like to do any activity in a planned and orderly manner. Uh, they prefer non-fiction and enjoy theories. You know, they love to read theories. And they are very sequential thinker. Sequential thinker in a sense, you know, everything should happen in a proper sequence, not in an abrupt manner. And they love to make anything simple. They don't like complex. Even if it is a complex one, they would uh, work on it and they would try to bring it in a simple manner. In simple, I can say even complex uh, problems, they can explain in a simple manner. Okay. So they like to work with things that can be seen or touched. Okay. Uh, the right brain quality is they are emotional. Uh, they are very creative. They focus on big picture. They love music, art, drama. Uh, here, imagination is the one which predominate. Uh, they prefer fiction and they enjoy storytelling. Uh, they love to make anything colorful, be their, you know, desk, uh, be their classroom or be their own uh, workspace or be their own home. They would like to have it colorful. Okay. And they are, uh, they are divergent thinker, which are different from the left brains. Left brains are sequential thinker. Here they are divergent thinker. And they like to think with abstract ideas. Okay. One word you say, they can work on it. Okay, whereas for left brain, if you say one word, they need details to work on it. Okay, so that makes a difference uh, in general about left brain and right brain. So famous careers, if you see, um, engineers, scientists, finance people, medicine, quality analysts or any analyst for that matter, computer programmers who follow proper routine in their work, right? In a sense, their profession would itself have a routine, right? So they would be, uh, you know, uh, they they all would be left brain people. Okay. If you see the right brain people, graphic designers, psychologists, uh, counselors, interior designers, and then uh, natural leaders. They are basically natural leaders. Uh, naturalists. They were. They love to be with nature. And then artists, creative directors. They are all right brain people. These are just in general, uh, you know, uh, what to say, careers, okay? Even in your work, you can easily identify. Uh, you would be very comfortable uh, in doing something creative, something new, something different, if at all, if you're right brain. You don't like to follow the uh, monotonous routine work, okay? You do something different. You want something different every day. The fresh feel, you need to have it every day, right? That is how right brain people work and they would like to lead their life. Left brain people, they follow routine. They want everything in a proper routine manner. Okay? So they don't like, uh, they feel uncomfortable if the routine breaks out. Okay. So those are left brain people. Okay. So there is one, uh, you know, another element called if both are equal, if the number of A responses, number of B responses are equal, it means 
they are good enough in handling both left brain functionality and right brain functionality okay based on situation they can use left brain as well as right brain i would say that is an advanced step okay uh, i'll tell you an example uh, this person you know autumn uh, adigo okay uh, she is a very famous entrepreneur uh, in the world of fashion okay she creates lot of uh, you know uh, what to say fashion something related to fashion i'm not sure about the exact business okay so she is an entrepreneur into fashion if you see there are two this is a two extremity right fashion uh, it have to be completely right brain they love colors uh, totally different everything has to be new every attire has to be new something totally different right if you take business uh, they cannot do it in that manner let's say you know uh, they uh, operating a hr function operating a finance function operating a marketing function when talking with client right so they need to follow proper routine right they cannot uh, they cannot show their creativity when it comes to finance right so if they cannot uh, cost different you know put the cost estimation different right so this person uh, in a beautiful article she have mentioned that uh, i from start you know from their uh, from her initial days of work she started using uh, both the brains equally okay uh, she is much aware about this left brain right brain and she started exploring it and uh, it comes to uh, you know working with creative team the production of creative team she would use the right brain hand so she would be more creative she would speak more uh, you know uh, something totally divergent uh, think of she is and she uses that kind of uh, work when it comes to creative work she when she speaks with the creative departments and when it comes to finance marketing hr and all that she uses the left brain hand okay so that she have everything on place and uh, they are she is running a, a risk free uh, business otherwise it would be in risk right so she have managed very well uh, in using these two hats so she know when to use right brain hat she, she know when to use left brain hat okay so even as such when you want to definitely there would be situations where the other uh, type of brain activities you have to do in, in your life in your career right for example uh, you are um, let's say you are a mathematics person uh, mathematician or mathematics professor okay so you are very really used to using following the conventional methods and all that and there would be something totally you know i would say there is a fun gala event or some other uh, student even that is happening and you need to guide them so you cannot use the um, you know you cannot use the conventional uh, uh, you know proven method while dealing with students gala event so you there you need to be creative that time you have to use right brain hat right so this is how you need to shift your hands between right brain and the left brain okay so this person is the example in if you read the article it is beautiful article uh, you know she'll be talking about how it helped her Uh, in meeting out otherwise what happens sometimes we miss out the other elements right when we are really good uh, in creativity we tend to be you know very lenient very creative at the end we would not be able to close the business right so she is a brand example for that so it's you know i would uh, you know definitely say if you want to uh, put your signature in the hand which you are using you would use it easily am i right so quickly take a take the pen and then um, sign it in the in the whatever notebook you have sign with a for example if you are a right hand person just sign with your right hand okay so i think um, you would have completed now right you could sign it very fast now if you are right hand then you can choose left hand okay so now sign with your left hand your own signature sign with your left hand okay was it easy put me in the chat box was it easy was it easy to use the other hand and sign no yes it is little bit bit difficult right not that easy yeah many have said no but do you think with uh, time if you can practice daily 
to sign with your left hand one day you would be able to achieve it right am i right right definitely yes yeah so it is the same uh, the same principle applies here so if you want to for example if you are a, right, a left brain person and then you want to uh, develop the qualities of right brain with time with effort it would not be easy at the, uh, you know initially but then with time and effort you would be able to develop the qualities of the right brain okay with time and effort it's just like this you know you can always remember this signature uh, activity okay so with time and effort yes you can develop any quality which is which you don't possess right now okay so that is about left brain and right brain qualities okay this is the first psychometric simple test uh, next comes the second test a uh, very famous uh, test uh, called does uh, multiple intelligence okay so this multiple intelligence concept is created by gardner a very famous concept okay so there will be multi, uh, different type of intelligence we would be saying you know intelligent means who are good in numbers you would say intelligent means scientist right but even a uh, air rahman is an intelligent person okay not just air rahman any person in the music world uh, who have shined a lot is their intelligent a person who can michael jackson or you know uh, prabhu deva whoever dancer you want to tag they are intelligent in their own field right so intelligent is not a word which is coined only for science and mathematics people okay somehow we got that got into our mind everybody possess different type of intelligence if somebody have to tell us is yes, you are a intelligent person we would feel definitely happy right so when we undergo this test 100% you can tell that hey i am intelligent in this particular area okay so this is a beautiful test which again you can use for your own students uh, which uh, you know uh, i have shared the uh, the same details in the reference document as well which i'll be sharing at the end okay here comes the first intelligence uh, linguistic verbal intelligence so these people uh, who are strong in ling linguistic verbal intelligence they are they could use the words very well they are good in writing they are good in speaking as well okay these people are good at writing stories memorizing information and then reading uh, if you see the characteristics uh, they remember written and spoken information easily they enjoy reading they enjoy writing and important point is that they are good in speaking as well okay they can they are very good at debate speakers even they can you give persuasive speeches okay people like you know after listening to listening to their speech everybody would say yes 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 that kind of influence they can make with their speech and they would be able to explain things very well okay they can also humor use humor while telling stories we see the potential career choices writers lawyers professors right trainers copywriters um, editors journalists linguists poet pr and media consultants public speakers politicians if you see the politicians the major intelligence they have is verbal intelligence many people succeed just with their speech right whether they do or not with the speech they would be able to succeed it right because of the intelligence they possess or in terms of linguistic and verbal and then tv and radio presenters voice over or dubbing artists okay so these people have linguistic verbal intelligence okay i think many of us would possess this intelligence because you know if you are in teaching field we are in training field so we all would have this common intelligence right linguistic verbal intelligence okay this is the first one you can note it down if you want because at the end i'll be asking it next logical mathematical intelligence so people who are strong in logical mathematical intelligence they are good at reasoning uh, they are good in recognizing the patterns uh, between the you know elements available and they can logically analyze any problem any situation okay uh, these people tend to think conceptually about numbers relationship between numbers relationship between uh, the data right they are all good in it and uh, if you see the characteristics they have excellent problem solving skills uh, they enjoy thinking uh, you know about abstract ideas they like conducting scientific experiments they can solve complex computations 
they understand the relationship between cause and effect towards the tangible outcome or result. Okay, they are good in cause, cause and effect. Potential career choices, scientists, mathematicians, computer programmers, engineers, accountants, researchers, traders, software programmers, statisticians, bankers. Okay, so they're all they all possess this type of intelligence. Few of you would, would also have this intelligence, right? Logical, mathematical engineer uh, intelligence, since many of you are from engineering background, right? Next. Uh, visual spatial intelligence. This is a you know I would say a beautiful intelligence which they have you know tagged it because not many of us would, would be talking about in our day to day life. Okay, it is very hard you know if a if a faculty member can identify a particular student have this uh, visual spatial intelligence. I can say if you can guide the student in the right manner, he would be in a different level. Okay, because the era which we uh, we are right now, this visual spatial Spatial intelligence is taking a big, uh, you know, uh, road. Okay, so people who are strong in visual spatial intelligence, they are good at visualizing things. I could say in an empty room. Okay, if you leave the person who have this visual spatial intelligence, they can easily, you know, um, imagine the things in this, inside the room. Okay. If you leave the person in a in a completely empty land, they can easily imagine a building or you know anything that can be built in that particular area in an empty land. Okay, that imaginative skills they have. Okay, so uh, they are good and they are good in reading and writing for enjoyment. They are good at puzzling, you know, putting puzzles together. They are uh, they are good in interpreting pictures and graphs and charts as well. They love to draw, paint, and the visual arts as well, and then rec they recognize patterns easily. If you see the uh, potential career choices, architects, uh, civil engineering students also would be having this intelligence. And then artists, uh, engineers again, uh, city planners, uh, graphic designers, uh, inventors, photographers, videographers, sculptors, even aerospace scientists, they all possess this visual spatial intelligence okay this is one of the beautiful intelligence which many people uh, they sometimes at the later stage of life they would be uh, uh, realizing that hey i have this intelligence but days would have gone right so visual spatial intelligence this is one thing which we really need to find out in the among the students and then musical intelligence quite obvious we can easily find it out uh, people who are good in music, they can, you know, uh, they are good in rhythm, sounds, patterns, you know, they can all do really good. They can sing, uh, they can recognize any patterns, they can remember the songs and melodies very well. Uh, right? Potential career choices, singers, sound and acoustic engineers, composers, uh, DJs, entertainers, um, environment and noise analysts. Uh, musical instrument repair specialists, musical performers, voice coaches, they all possess musical intelligence. Next comes the uh, bodily kinesthetic intelligence. Uh, these people uh, are really good in moving their body. Okay, they are, uh, you know, if they want to perform some action, any performance, they are, they are really good in it. Okay, uh, they are skilled in dance and sports. Uh, they enjoy creating things with their own hands, just like sculptors. You know uh, the way they make the statues and all that even doctors you know doctors have this intelligence because they you know uh, they would be able to understand very easily the functionality of a human body right and then uh, also yoga psycho uh, what is the uh, therapist and a physiotherapist and then even sign language interpreters they all use uh, have this intelligence so you know uh, if you see the potential career choices dancers sculptors actors Athletes, sports persons, physical therapists, physicians, sign language interpreters all have this bodily kinesthetic intelligence. So check whether you have this now. Okay, so next intelligence, interpersonal intelligence. So interpersonal intelligence, these people are good at understanding and interacting with people. Okay, so these individuals are really, you know, they're very skilled in understanding somebody's emotion. Uh, they can motivate somebody very easily. Uh, they can identify what is their aim, desires, and all that. And they can also understand the intentions of people around them. 
okay? that is called as interpersonal intelligence they can communicate well very verbally uh, they are skilled at non verbal communication which is body language they see situations from different perspectives uh, they create positive relationship with people and uh, they resolve conflicts in group settings you can see this person who uh, a person who has this intelligence they'll be kind of friend for many okay so potential career choices psychologist and then uh, philosophers counselors uh, sales person politician hr professionals uh, teachers trainers educators uh, health providers politicians again what i have mentioned coaches and mentors mentors caregivers they all possess interpersonal intelligence so you can note it down if you have this then intrapersonal intelligence intrapersonal intelligence uh, these people are good at understanding themselves better okay they are very uh, uh, observant uh, they can understand uh, each and every emotion which is coming out from them they can easily relate it to it okay so this is called as intra within yourself intra person okay so they are good in aware they are good at being aware of their own emotional states feelings and motivations they tend to enjoy self reflection and, and analysis they love to they dream uh, they explore relationship with others uh, and they keep on assessing their personal states okay they do lot of self analysis so you know even these personality tests it is also part of intrapersonal uh skills okay people with interpersonal intelligence they analyze their strengths and weakness very well they enjoy analyzing theories and ideas they have excellent self awareness they understand the basis for his or her own motivation and feeling the potential career choices are philosophers uh, writers theorists scientists you know anybody uh, you can see even religious gurus they have this interpersonal intelligence okay so that is called interpersonal intelligence the last and the beautiful intelligence i would say is that naturalistic intelligence okay so individuals who are high in the shape of intelligence are more in tune with nature they are often interested in nurturing exploring the environment learning about other species right so they love to be with nature they love to you know uh, know about animals they love to know about plants they love to know about things around in terms of nature okay so they are interested in botany biology zoology you know and uh, they categorize and catalog information easily they enjoy camping trekking gardening hiking and exploring outdoors uh, they dislike learning unfamiliar topics which is not connected with nature you see the potential career choices um, biologist uh, con uh, conservationist uh, gardeners farmers uh, wildlife photographers they all possess uh, naturalistic intelligence so this is uh, you know beautiful intelligence which every one of us have to cultivate so that we can you know um, protect our environment right so these are the intelligence which uh, this particular concept called multiple intelligence say okay so now it's a chat time okay so for you to quickly note down the intelligence which we have discussed now okay now text Uh, in the chat box, the intelligence which you possess. Okay, time for chat. Imabu Karpa, linguistic and interpersonal, fantastic. Okay, except music channel and kinesthetic, I think you have the remaining. Okay, fantastic. Visual intelligence and verbal intelligence for very good. Okay, so you think about music, picture, and people smart. Okay. Visual intelligence, Manish will. 
okay linguistic logical interpersonal intrapersonal and then naturalistic intelligence fantastic fantastic sentences Okay, anybody else there? Okay, except kinesthetics. Okay, fantastic, Ajay sir. Okay, fantastic. So now you would, uh, you know, uh, I could definitely uh, say that from these two uh, psychometrics which we have taken so far. Uh, you can easily you know identify your own strengths and weaknesses correct uh, maybe like one or two elements you can add to your strength and weaknesses list right? okay fine good 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 so now we are moving to another beautiful uh, test called psychometric test um, i mean another beautiful test called mbti which is another psychometric test for which i would definitely say uh, see uh, for this uh, if you want to conduct for your students you can use the website called as Human Metrics. Okay, so you can, I think you can see my screen, Human Metrics. So humanmetrics.com. So this is the, um, uh, what is it, the link? Well, let me put it in the chat. Okay, a few more have added. Okay. okay then. Fantastic. So if you see, this is the questionnaire, uh, you know, available online. Uh, it's been for many years, even while doing, while, uh, you know, uh, during my college days, I've taken this test. Uh, it's been for many years right now, this particular questionnaire. But it is very difficult to answer now because the number of questions, if you actually see, uh, it is 64. It would take most of your time if you are planning it now. Okay which we will not do now I, I have planned uh, simple questions for you but then if you want to know your exact typology uh, i uh, highly recommend that you go to this particular link and then you uh, answer all these six, 64 questions when you answer all these 64 questions you would be tagged under a typology wherein you can see your career choices and all that okay so as of now i will be sharing few questionnaires in uh, ppt which you can answer and then you can um how to say understand your personality type okay so now after get after the session you can always go to this link answer it and then do it once again for your uh, reference okay you can learn even more okay now we are moving to the uh, test called mbti so which is called as i know mayor's brick type indicator uh, i should type that one minute do you want to uh, check mbti or you can use jump typology okay so you can uh, while googling you can use uh, this terms mbti mayor's brick type indicator is the name of this test or you can use jump typology test okay so here comes another set of questions uh, i think um, yeah so um, yeah i think around 12 questions are there so again here try to answer the most accurate uh, characteristic of yours okay so you'll have to there are uh, actually i would say um, eight different uh, types here so you have to uh, work out a little uh, different okay so now as of now what you can do is that question number one two and three uh, there are options a and b uh, try to choose which characteristics belongs to you okay so the first one are you usually a good mixer with groups of people you're quite reserved for which you can answer a or b
question number two. Do you tend to have uh, broad friendships with many different people? Or you have limited friends, but you have a very deep friendship? Question number three. When you are with group of people, would you usually join in the talk or would you stand back and listen first? Okay. For all these questions, if your choices are A, then you are an extrovert. If your choices are B, then you are an introvert. So note down whether you are an extrovert or introvert. If extrovert, you can use, uh, you know, you can mark it as E. If you are an introvert, you can mark it as I. Okay, I should mention it here. If you're an extrovert, you can mark it as P. E. And then if you're an introvert, mark it as I. Okay, because this E and I, this is the letter we'll be using to for identifying the typology. Okay, moving on to the next slide. So question number four, five, and six. This is for the next uh, type, sensing and intuition. In doing something that many other people do, would you rather invent a way of your own? Or do you do it in the accepted way? Okay, just hold on one minute, one minute. I think the A and uh, B have been shifted here. One minute. Okay. If you do it in an accepted way, then A. If you do it on your own way, it is B. Okay. Next question. What do you prefer? Facts and data? Or would you prefer new ideas? Question number six, do you like to be a realistic person or an imaginative person? Okay, so now you can uh, you know, choose it A, B. If your answer is A for all these four, five, and six, then you are a sensing personality. So for sensing personality, you can use the letter S. Mark it as yes. And if your answer is B for all these three questions, you can use I, sorry, N, N. Okay. For intuitions, intuition, it is N. For sensing, it is S. Okay. Why N here? Because we have already used introvert. So we are using I there and N here. Okay. Now moving on to the next Right. So question number seven, eight, and nine. While solving a problem, so what do you do? You analyze the problem or you sympathize the feelings of the team members. Let's say there is a problem happening in a group, in a classroom or whatever it is. Whether you will analyze the problem or would you uh, consider what is the feeling of people uh, in the group? Okay, question number eight, do you usually value emotion more than logic or you value logic more than feelings? Again, I think that's a shift here, sorry about it. Very sorry, I should have changed. So do you usually value logic more than feelings or you value emotion more than logic? I'm sorry, I'm sorry about the inconvenience. Question number nine, do you like to be a firm-minded or warm-hearted? So if your answers are A, then you are a thinker, you can market 
is T. The answers are B. Then you are a feeler. You can mark it as A. Okay. Let me check the question before I proceed. Okay. Okay. Yes, perfect. Questions are right. So, when you go somewhere for the day, would you rather plan well and go? Or you just take the vehicle and then go? Okay, you want, uh, if you want to have a complete schedule, okay, I start by this time, I do this, I do that, and then I come back by this time. You follow that kind of planning, well, even planning for a trip, that is different than your A. If you're just, you know, planning, okay, let's all, let's start the vehicle and then go on, we'll plan out on the way, or we'll go there and see. That kind of uh, planning do we do. Question number 11, does following a schedule, whether it appeals to you or stress you? Okay. Your, you know, uh, following a schedule is a cake. It's like a cake walk for you. Then it is A. If it is really a troubling thing, then it is B. Do you prefer acting in a systematic and planned way, or you are kind of spontaneous? You do, you know, as and when things arise. Yes. Okay. So if your answers are A. Then you are judging type. So please don't go with the word called judging. The meaning judging here is different from the usual word. Okay. In general, we say judging means trying to, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, judge somebody. No, it's not that here. Okay. The judging terminology is different, quite different. Okay. Okay. So now you would have uh, got, uh, you know, uh, four letter in your hand. So either extrovert or introvert, E or I. Sensing or intuition, S or N, thinking or feeling, T or F, judging or perception, J or P. Okay. So can you please uh, enter uh, which type you have got? Okay. In the chat box. Text your type. ESTJ. Okay. Okay. I have no doubt. No? INFJ. EJ, fantastic. ESFP. ESFP, okay. ENFP. ESTP. Again, ESTP. ESTP, okay. ESTP, fantastic. ESTP, okay. Anybody else? In ESTP, okay. A lot of ESTP, okay. So for five people, I've said as ESTP. Okay, good enough. We shall proceed with the right explanation. So these are the uh, 16 typology, uh, you know, uh, we kind of land up e ISTJ, e ISFJ, INFJ, INTJ, ISTP, ISFP, and goes on. Okay, so definitely you'd have got one type out of it. Okay, so now we will see what is the meaning of E, I, S, N, T, F, and all that. Okay, we'll go one by one. So if you see this extroversion and introversion, that is E and I, the first two uh, uh, trait we saw, right? Uh, it is basically like how, where you focus your attention. Okay, so extrovert, you can see, you know, it is from inside to outside, introvert, outside to inside. Okay, you, you will, you, I mean, you will kind of uh, read the explanation, you will be able to understand much better. Sensing how you take in information, sensing in a linear format or intuition, you kind of oversee, right? So you see the holistic picture. What you do there, okay? The way you make decision based on information, so you would be either a thinker or a feeler. 
and how you deal with the world, your lifestyle, okay, then you are judging or perceiving. Okay, so here comes the explanation. Okay, extroversion and introversion. Uh, extrovert, if you see uh, the direction of our own attention and energy. Okay, extrovert, they focus us on outside world. Okay, the uh, other people, they focus on other people, they focus on events, they focus on actions, they focus on things around. For them, it is like when they get into a hall, like who are there in the hall? Okay, what is happening in the hall? Right? So that is what it matters. Okay, if, you, if they get into a college, what is happening in the college? What is the students there? What is it they are doing? Right? What is happening with the uh, professors around? Right? So they kind of focus on outside world. Okay? That is where they get their energy. Okay? When they are, if you put them in a group of, group of people, they would be very happy, charged up. Okay? For a simple term, I can say, they love to attend even functions, let it be wedding events or any functions, they love pattern function because they can meet a lot of new people, they can meet a lot of friends around. Okay. Introvert, on the contrary, they focus on the internal world. They would be munching their own thoughts, their own emotions, their own experiences. Okay. If you actually put a, a person uh, inside an empty room, if you put an extrovert inside an empty room, when he comes out, he will be totally mad. Okay, he would be drained, uh, or, or else he would literally sleep. That's all. Okay, so he will be totally drained. They, he would not be that excited now. But if you put an purse, if you put an introvert inside an empty room, it, they come out like a yani. Okay, they would they would have figured out a, a lot of things which is pending. Oh, I need to do that. I need to do this. Okay, I should have done this way. I should have done this way. So they would be thinking a lot, and while coming out, they'll be very clear. Their face will have a lot of changes. But the extrovert, when you put them in an empty hall, they will lose literally their energy out. Okay. On the contrary, if you put extrovert in a function, okay, let's say let's take simple example, wedding event. Okay, if you put an extrovert in a wedding event, they would meet different people, they would meet their own friends, they will be totally excited. Okay. But if you put an introvert inside in a wedding hall, okay, the introvert try to find out a chair in the corner of the room and uh, he or she would go and sit there. Okay. Or uh, he would be sticking on with one person who have come along with him. He would not do nothing more than it. Even somebody gets introduced, he says hi, hello and all that. And he immediately want to get out of the wedding hall. So simple way you can understand the character, characteristic trait of extrovert and introvert. Okay, so extrovert, as I said, they speak a lot. They love speaking. Okay, and they love partying. They love being with people around. Okay, introvert, they love being alone. If nobody is there in the uh, home, they would be extremely happy. Okay, they would love to be alone. And uh, the thing is that many introverts are uh, uh, judged that they do not know much. They say, right, hey, why don't you speak? But they will have depth knowledge. What they show outside is only, uh, you know, a tip of iceberg. Okay. They will have a lot of, they gather a lot of information, but they don't prefer to speak. Okay. So extrovert, they are very action oriented. Introvert, they are reflection oriented. Extrovert, they communicate. Everything they communicate. Okay. It is very, very hard to keep a secret with an extrovert. Okay. If you if you if you tell a secret to an extrovert person, that goes out easily. Okay. Because it is very hard for them to retain it. Okay. But if you tell it to an introvert person, that is there with them till they go. Okay. So they love solitude. Uh, extrovert, if they you think if you ask something uh, to be done, you know. They immediately get into action. Then they later think on, hey, am I doing it right? Later in the later stage, only they kind of reflect. After reflection, they do it again. Okay. But an introvert, before starting an activity uh, or any task, they kind of sit down and think. They reflect what should be done and all that. And then they act. After uh, doing that, they again go back to the reflection. Okay. Extrovert, uh, they uh, have breadth knowledge, meaning to say, you know, uh, they know a lot of things, but they will not have the depth information. Okay. Whereas introvert, they know little, but they will have depth information. Okay. 
and an extrovert uh, for them external events are more important for uh, introvert internal thoughts and reflections are more important for them uh, extrovert they prefer to speak uh, rather uh, rather than to listen introvert they prefer to listen rather than to speak okay so this is the characteristics of extrovert and introvert okay so now we can map it right with your characteristic okay here comes the next so sensing and intuition uh, it is basically on the way you take the information okay so now if i ask you to look around the room wherever you are seated your own uh, workplace be it is college home wherever just look around the room okay if i ask you what do you feel there be different answers correct if you feel that okay you know if you just look around what all do you see okay if you say okay i can see this i can see that if you list down things 1 2 3 4 4 okay then you are a sensing personality if you look around and feel that okay something is happening you are talking more about uh, the aroma inside the room then intuition then you are an intuitive person okay so sensing focuses on the present they focuses on the current events and facts they take in information from the five senses okay you know what they see what they listen what they smell and all that intuition they focuses on the future okay they focus on the new opportunities and ideas okay uh, as i said sensing people you know they give attention to details just like the person you know who is using the magnifier to see a plant inside the in the whole uh, crowded place to so that level they see the detail okay intuition if you see on the other end they kind of uh, they can imagine very well uh, they can see the future easily whereas for sensing people they cannot see the future easily okay if you ask okay after 10 after 10 years how do you uh, see yourself uh, intuitive piece a person can uh, imagine the everything you know uh, what what where he would live what he would be doing to so that level imagination should be really fast and high okay sensing people they would be listing on i'd be doing this i would have done that right the listing would be done by the sensing people so sensing people give attention to little things and details intuitive people they follow their intuition and inspiration okay uh, sensing people they rely on facts and experience intuition people they use as imagine they use imagination and then uh, sensing people they are very practical and utility in a sense uh, practically speaking then this word would be completely suitable for sensing people they speak practical things intuition people they kind of have tendencies simple connection uh, like whatever information available they kind to interconnect and see okay and then uh, sensing people they are very consistent intuition people they take chances that is how they are created okay sensing people they are very present they would be in the present or in the past okay because they are dealing with all data available right intuition people would uh, would be mostly in the future thinking about the future okay uh, so even i would say uh, if you are worrying about the present things happening with you and the past thing which is happening with you then you are sensing person okay if you are worrying about the future things that is happening with you you do this okay and then tradition they are very tradition oriented uh, they follow the conventional methods intuition people they are very innovative okay so this is about sensing and intuition the next comes thinking and feeling from the word you can take it easily uh, the way we make decision thinking people they take decisions objectively they use logic okay so in simple terms say we can say they use brain okay everywhere you know uh, brain uh, brain is a function for both heart and uh, brain but then we can say brain they use brain okay feeling people they use heart okay the so called terminology for heart feeling people they take decisions subjectively they use feeling okay uh, if you actually see thinking people they have completely they analyze the data everything around okay and then they take decision logic most of the most of the time the you know very uh, you know strong thinkers they'll be like this uh, wall no feelings you can see in their face anything and everything they would be like mm, nothing no expressions they don't use much expressions 
the person who thinks a lot okay so mostly uh, people would see uh, would say that hey uh, don't he, don't he have any feeling you know uh, don't you even uh, worry about something or don't you even have you feel happy for something to that extent they would be happy they would worry but everything would be within themselves they would not show it in their face okay that is thinkers feelers if you see they are very compassionate they they love they love to be you know they give a value for the feeling around they like to be loved by people okay they are very compassionate they are peacemakers when there's a feeling person around uh, there'll be a lot of uh, uh, what to say um, a peace inside the uh, team because the feeling person understands each everybody's feeling a negative feeler person they will completely ruin the whole team that is also a consequence okay uh, so thinking uh, logic uh, they follow logic there is feeling they follow values okay uh they follow you know uh, here they follow the truthfulness in handling a situation they here they follow the tactfulness okay how can you solve the problem uh, which is uh, correct for the problem that is how thinkers do whereas for the feeler how can we solve a problem without hurting anybody that is feelers okay thinkers they are very fair feelers they are very compassionate they understand emotions beautifully okay thinkers they are very clear mind feelers they are very kind heart thinkers they are straight forward feelers they avoid conflicts thinkers they are impartial feelers they are sympathetic okay so this is about thinking and feeling okay so slowly you can take it up even at your home you can you know if you are married then you can easily identify with your spouse you know uh, either uh, both of you would be in the same characteristic extrovert introvert or you would be an expert extrovert or your spouse would be an introvert vice versa right so you would be a thinker the other person would be a feeler or both of you would be a great thinkers right so we can easily identify map it with your own family as well okay the last one judging and perception it is basically the way we act in the outer world okay so judging here you know it uh, they act they act according to a plan they are very consistent for example if they want to start from a and then reach b there would be only one way one proper established way okay whereas for b it is different for example uh, for let's take an example that okay you want to start from uh, let's say okay you want to uh, I, I, i will take an example like you want to start from kanbatu to chennai okay the judging person there would be an established route okay so they would try to go it in that way okay or even you can think of short distance places whereas perception people they would like to explore new route even while while coming to college judging people they follow one route let's say the perception people if they have different routes for uh, uh, reaching the college they will try one route one day right okay they would okay if this is crowded okay let me take the other one they keep on trying new routes they find out new routes okay that is how they act okay they behave so perception people they act according to a situation flexible and impulsive mm, judging people i should say they are very serious about the deadlines they are very very punctual uh, very serious about the deadlines they get upset when the things are not happening on time okay and judging uh, people like you know uh, they do again uh, uh, to do list and all they write down the whole to do list and then they work accordingly perception people as i said they kind of explore okay and when it comes to time management for perception when they say 10 o'clock uh, 9:55 is also 10 o'clock for them 10 is also 10 o'clock for them 10:05 is also 10 o'clock for them 10:15 is also 10 o'clock for them 10:30 is also 10 o'clock for them until 10:59 is also 10 o'clock for them okay meaning the time for them is related it is not absolute for judging people it is completely absolute 10 means it is sharp 10 it's not 9:59 it's not 10:01 okay so to that extent judging people are time oriented very highly disciplined and uh, punctual perception people they kind of flexible in terms of time okay so for example i always quote one of my uh, friend you know when we all plan for a trip during our college days and all that uh, you know uh, she would be she is a judging personality uh, she would be very particular about the time even for a picnic or a just uh, uh, a kind of uh, relaxing trip she would be very particular hey you all said that you would reach by 10 o'clock but then you didn't reach by 10 o'clock you came at 10:15 10:30 she would be 
and we all would be happily starting on the journey but it would be absurd that hey you didn't start the journey on time right to that extent they would be perfect about time okay so judging people they are very structured uh, perception people they go on the flow okay judging people they are very organized perception people they are spontaneous judging people they are very goal oriented whereas perception people are process oriented okay uh, judging people they are very precise perception people they are unpredictable judging people they are plan and perception people they you know uh, uh, have an attitude like let's see what happens okay and then judging people they are uh, very orderly in orderly fashion they do things here like fluidity you know just like a river they run through okay so this is about judging and perception so from the question that you would have arrived at something now after listening to the characteristics characteristics you would have either the same personality or sometimes that would be also a change okay but there is no problem so maybe like when you go through the questionnaire which i have said online you would be able to get it okay so just like as i said for example if, if you say okay see i am a judging person or i am i'm a perception person i want to uh, develop the qualities of a judging or the opposite kind you can definitely develop the qualities okay for example you are a person uh, what to say feeler okay but then uh, most you would have experience that people you know sometimes uh, they see you as an emotional person you don't want to be show as an emotional person you want to develop the logic you want to uh, be a you know, very strong thinker so you can definitely uh, work on the thinking skills okay so just that you need to put time and efforts okay so that is how it is okay so um, so now let's check the famous personalities career choices strengths and weakness uh, basically this uh, one which i'm sharing right now it's like a one day workshop you know we kind of uh, completely give the print out of each personality which i would not be able to do now so what i'm going to do is that from the chat box uh, whatever personality uh, we have uh, i have received uh, we shall check in google who are these uh, famous people okay so before which there is a slide i'll show you that uh okay first one one minute okay let's see from first some okay first person is murugamendam shelaya okay uh, uh, so you have mentioned this infj for him let's see infj um okay infj let's find out okay infj here they are uh, the confident person they are very quiet Uh, mystical and inspiring uh, if you see the famous infjs carl jung carl jung is the person who actually created this test who is the founder of this you know uh, jung typology right from jung uh, so he is carl jung he is the person who created so you have that personality sir and then al fasino okay i'm not sure who is that but then you can google it mahatma gandhi has this personality infj okay fantastic so next person estj so let me find out who have said estj dr vk sindhu raghavan sir okay estj estj where are they oh perfect good so you can see uh, estj managers uh, very organized very particular um, you know you can see uh, mishli obama okay, okay you are basically a manager with you sir okay next esfp who have said esfp Jamuna Rani, okay. Jamuna Rani, uh, ma'am, one minute. E S F G, E S F G, okay. E S F G or F P? E S F P. Sorry, E S F P. Okay. So here comes. They are entertainers, uh, spontaneous, energetic, and enthusiastic. Okay. Spontaneous. Yeah, you can see here. Spontaneous, energetic, enthusiastic. Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh my God, very good. Uh, you know, I think it's not a hero. I think so. Not sure. But then Cameron Diaz, and then oh, many actors. They all uh, belong to this category. ESFP, entertainers, basically. Okay. So next, next is uh, ENFP. Uh, Munishwari Ma'am, you've said ENFP. ENFP. Okay. Yes, advocate. uh they are very enthusiastic creative and then sociable walt disney is enfp personality mark twain and then elen degeneres yeah oh okay 
that particular person, very famous person, Helen. So she's all, uh, I mean, um, uh, they all belong to ENF. Okay. So for you and for remaining people who have said, I think uh, Dr. Nalini, Sriniti, Ajay, Alagar Raja, Raja, Justin, uh, you all said as uh, ESTP. Okay. INFP. Okay. Two more I've said. Okay. We shall see. ESTP, the showman, the smart, energetic, versatile, and risk taking abilities there. Donald Trump, uh, then Winston Churchill, you know, okay, all people who, you know, uh, American presidents uh, have this uh, ESTP characteristic, okay, ESTP, fantastic, good, okay, and two more, mm, okay. Uh, Amu Sugmari, okay, INFP, INFP, oh, what is it? Okay, wow. Uh, the helper, poetic, kind, and altruistic. J.K. Rowling, a very famous author, right? So, and few more, two more, I'm not sure of their names. Then, yes. And then, one more person I mentioned, it is ESTP. Okay, ESTP, yes. For Nazreen, I think, yes, for her also, we have seen. Okay, you can simple, uh, you can just Google it. Okay, let's say INFJ, famous personalities. You can see here, okay. INJ, uh, Adolf Hitler, Mahatma Gandhi, they all have similar type, okay. And then if you see uh, ESTJ, famous personalities. Okay, a lot of people you can see, you can, you know, uh, and then. And first. Then ESFP. Okay, so you can just Google it and then you can uh, find out. A lot of people will be there with sharing your own personality, which is quite interesting when you say that, you know, okay, Will Smith have my personality type. Okay. And then, yes. Um, Okay, so my personality is ESFP, the entertainer. Okay, I love uh, that's my personality, uh, ESFP. Okay, so moving on, we shall see uh, famous careers uh, for ES uh, for all the personality traits. So we can see INFJ, ISFP. You can see uh, one liner as well as for famous as well as famous careers. We can see one by one INFJ. Uh, okay, let's see from here ESTJ. Okay, somebody has said ESTJ. Uh, yes, taking care of business, police officer, judge, military person, teacher, school administrator, business manager, ESTJ. Okay. And then anything else here? ESTP. Yes, many have said ESTP. And then ESTP, uh, their characteristic is let's get busy. They are good in sales, marketing, entrepreneur, detectives as well. And then Anything else here? Yes, TJ. Okay, done. Next. You can find out your own career. ENFP, somebody have said anything is possible. They are uh, TV anchors, nutritionists, actors, journalists, counselors. Okay. Then ESFP. ESFP, I think it is there in the before. Sorry, ESFP. I have messed out my own personality. Artists, actors, counselors, social workers. Coaches, musicians, psychologists. There are too many things because I have explored more of my careers. So I've added too many things here. Okay. Yes. So these are the famous careers. And uh, in one line, you can say uh, who you are with the personality trait. Okay. So this personality trait, it uh, changes also. Okay. Uh, uh, let's say you can take the test and you can check it. Uh, maybe after uh, maybe six months, you can also you can take the test and check it. Okay. If you want to do this test for your own people, uh, go to ask your students to, uh, before you do it for your students, try to do it for yourself. Mm, do this jump typology test. Okay. So when you actually go through the jump typology test, uh, you would get a lot of answers. For example, mm, let's say ESFP, uh, areas, human metrics. Okay. 
this is how the test result would be after completing all the uh, questionnaire you would be landing up in this page you can very well see what i've said right yes if the careers acting uh, you know performances advertising uh, you know this kind of uh, thing you would be getting it so you can see yes fp career not just career there will be a lot of strength and weakness as well okay for example esfp uh, strengths and weakness you can um, you know, you can see the strength and weakness as well what is the strength what are the weaknesses and as well okay so uh, you know when during a workshop we kind of uh, sit with the people and then we try to uh, you know uh, what is it completely work with them and then we derive the report personalized report for them so to, to that extent is very uh, big uh, psychometric test but i've only given it just on that okay so this is about uh, the uh, all the parameters so so far any doubts that i need to answer uh, until now ESTJs, my personality is a prefer sets fact. Fantastic. Quite interesting. Thank you. Thank you for that. When you're realizing my characteristic, man, really wonderful session. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So any doubts which we need to clarify in terms of this MBTA, I would be happy to answer. Because it, uh, you know, um, I would definitely say, uh, see, uh, basically, uh, it would give us a, yes, a isba, yes, Baba, sir, you have raised your hand. You can speak. Very good evening. The session was yes, really useful. Please. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. Ma'am, can can professors like us uh, take up this uh, uh, psychometric or other? Can we be given certificates on psychometric assess assessment? And if so, now what is the procedure to become a psychometric assessor like you? Okay. Okay. Uh, so the thing is that there are n number of uh, psychometric assessor uh, certification for psychometric psychometric assessor the one which i did is uh, cami from carlton advanced management institute uh, which is placed in us but then uh, from uh, their india partner is uh, middle earth hr so they do this uh, you know uh, middle earth hr they do a lot of hr programs in which uh, uh, this is one the other area is that you can uh, do psychology courses as well there are n number of you know small uh, diploma courses or even you can take the uh, ma or uh, msc applied psychology so you will get to know n number of personality tests so what i've shared right now if you actually see mdk is only one test there are n number of tests available uh, for different param for different uh, situations okay if you see if you want to work in a team uh, there is a different test Okay, there is different tests. So likewise, there are n number of parameters. So if you go to uh, institutes, they will be giving specializing you on one particular test. Uh, it also, try to take up psychology course, uh, maybe a diploma or degree, uh, maybe in the over correspondence or distance mode. You will get to know more personality types as well. Okay, so I think thank, my answer would help. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, sir. one thing which i want to add here is that when you do for your own students uh, you know uh, try to dry run so many times before you do uh, because uh, the, the risk element here is that uh, the moment we get to know uh, our own traits uh, we shouldn't limit ourselves for example uh, you know for example you are a thinker i would say hey i would not feel for you i am a thinker i would stick on with thinker we shouldn't say that right we should be willing enough to change ourselves uh, as to a feeler uh, whenever required correct so we shouldn't the key element is that we shouldn't stop ourselves in becoming only a thinker okay so that is one thing which we need to work on so when we take uh, when we do it for the students uh, we should ensure them that hey uh, right now you're a thinker but you should also develop the qualities of a feeler right now you're an extrovert you should also develop the qualities of an introvert okay so being from the original personality they would land up in a career or they can see the career perspectives choices uh, so if they work on the other characteristics as well they can still work on they can still create a lot more different career choices okay so we should be very careful when we do it with students that they shouldn't get stuck with one personality they should be willing enough to develop the other characteristics as well that element alone we need to definitely tell when we do it for the students Okay, and before you do it, you try to dry run a lot because if you see the psychometric test, I have done so many hundreds of times. 
uh, in uh, through questionnaires and formats. So every time we experience different different things. Okay, so when you do again and again before you take it, students try to do it with your own friends, family, uh, your own uh, staff members around, and then take it to the students so that you can handle it very easily. Okay, any other question? Okay, so let me share. Uh, uh, before I, I, I haven't entered the session, one minute. So this is what uh, the psychometric test is all about. Uh, you can definitely take the session for your own students. Uh, for any help, you can definitely reach me. These are my contact details. This is my email ID, my you know, phone number, and I have a YouTube channel started. Uh, though I'm slowing in picking up in uh, YouTube, but then yes, I've shared few uh, videos on email writing and all that. So basically a training uh, uh, channel. And then Instagram, this is my Instagram uh, ID. Okay, I'll share the details as well. Uh, so quickly uh, for me to get motivated. So put it in the chat box. How was the session? How it benefited? Yes, already few, few have uh, shared the feedback, which I felt happy and uh, I could take back and work on it. So also please tell where I need to improve so that when I do the next session, you know, uh, it would help the other faculty members as well. Okay, so that way you can tell was a session and I'll share the uh, details of my contact details as well, okay? As well as I'll share the, uh, uh, what is it, reference document now. Can I place it this way? Did you receive, okay, I have to attach it separately, okay. <coughs> Ma'am, this is Nalini Joseph. Your yes, session was yes, very excellent and very informative. Thank you, thank you. And depending upon the situation, we also need to change. That is what, uh, after having uh, so much of experience, we think uh, we teachers should be like this. So sometimes it needs to be changed so that we become a lifelong mentor. Thank you for your session, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. That's a wonderful message. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think I have met the objective when, when the word you said, like, yes, we, we also need to change according to the situation. Yes, fantastic. Uh, somebody speaking, I couldn't hear. Um, Participants, you can post your questions now. Uh, also, I have to attach a, a document. Uh, can I share with the coordinator so that you can yes, all get that? You can share uh, the presentation to the participants. Okay, okay. I don't know how to bring Okay. Thank you, ma'am, for the information. Sure, no so we got uh, introduced to various psychometric tools, like uh, how to handle multiple intelligence uh, situations. And also, we will be trying to explore them in for our career. And also, we will try to explore them for our students, too. So thank you for accepting our invitation and inviting us in this uh, FDP. We are looking forward to interact with you in future, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all the participants. Again, I will share the assessment and feedback link in the chat box. Thank you all. Uh, tomorrow, we will start the day two, session one at uh, 9.30 a.m. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, thank you, ma'am, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you all. Nice connecting with you all. Thank you.